What's up, y'all? Happy February. It's a new month. This is a short month. I'm ready for the spring to get here because I'm here in Michigan. And girl, it's cold as hell. So, anywho, today's little vlog, we are going to do a sip and learn. So, go ahead and get you a glass of wine, sis. Bro, if you're a guy watching this, go get you a beer, pop you a cold one. If you don't drink, whatever, go get you some sparkling juice and sit back and let's chit chat. So, this is a highly requested video. It is going to be on travel. I'm tired of seeing these chicks on Instagram trying to charge y'all for their itinerary and what they did and how they did it. It's simple. I'm gonna put it to you like this. Google is your best friend, but I also have some tips and tricks for y'all to make sure you get the lowest prices and you know how to save or whatnot for your trip, okay? So let's get started. Grab your pen and a piece of paper. Save this video. Oh, before we get into it, I need you guys to hit that subscribe button, like button. Um, follow me on Instagram. I am Capricorn. And okay, let's get started. So first of all, you want to get you a planner. I put everything in my planner. I write down my itinerary. I have a whole list of a whole bucket list of where I want to go and what I want to do. So get you a planner and map all that out of what you want to do. So first of all, paying for the trip. Start you a travel fund. Some people say, oh, I can't afford to travel. It's just not in the budget. Yes, it is. You could plan these trips out a year or two in advance. Um, you can use something called Digit, which is like an automatic savings thing where it like rounds up your change and you can set your goal and it saves for you without you even thinking about it or like me i have my uh chase account set up where a certain amount goes into my savings every time i get paid for a certain travel fund um also you can use something called funjet funjet is my favorite i'll put all of the links down in the description box for you so you can go back and reference but funjet is my absolute favorite funjet you can go on you can search put in where you want to go it'll let you do payment plans if you need to um, i believe funjet you can plan trips up to two years out so what you do is put in where you want to go they also have deals um let's see i'll give you an example i didn't plan this i went to miami in july i planned it like two months in advance it wasn't that far in advance but in july and y'all know fountain blue is an expensive hotel if you ever been to fountain blue or ever looked up miami south beach fountain blue it's expensive over the summertime when i booked with funjet they had such a good special going on that i got a um a suite with two queen beds for like 850 dollars for a sunday to thursday 850 for two, for two people all together now y'all know that's a good deal <laughs> um but anywho with funjet you could um do your i don't think you can do your flights on a payment plan with funjet unless you choose um the finance option but you could definitely put your hotel on a payment plan so like say if you wanted to go say you want to go to miami um in august september you put in your dates pull it up and it'll give you an option to do a payment plan once you excuse me once you go through and do everything um the deposit i believe it depends on the cost of your trip but the deposits range anywhere from like 50 to 150 dollars and then you pay on it it's not auto you can have it automatically taken out but you pay on it up until i think they give you like a month before the trip to get it paid off so you can kind of go at your own pace of how much you pay my favorite site to use i would recommend anybody who is starting to travel um and don't really know where to start funjet is a great place so for flights um i'm just finding out that klarna and affirm i think those two do a credit check you can actually put your flights on payment plans now with klarna and affirm i think they do either the monthly or every two weeks they take money out of your check so that's good for the flights um what else for the flights um they also have something fly now pay later i haven't done that one yet but i heard that was a good one um oh hopper i use a lot of different apps when i'm looking to travel hopper is a good one so hopper 
Like I said, I put all of this stuff in the de description box. But Hopper is good for your flights. So with Hopper, you put in where you want to go, you put your dates in, and you can actually watch the flight. And Hopper will tell you, okay, hey, you should wait to buy this flight. It's going to be cheaper in the next few months. Or to tell you, hey, you should buy your flight now because the prices are about to go up. Hopper is really, really good for that. So you go into Hopper, you put your flights in, and you can choose to watch the flights. And it'll send you, whenever the flight goes up or down, it'll send you notifications and you can share it with your travel buddy so you guys can watch the flights together. And they also have an option, say if your flight is um, 300, say you don't have a whole 300 right now. They have an option where you can put pay a deposit and they'll hold that flight for you for two weeks and then you can pay the rest of that two weeks later. So that's a good option. That's one of my favorites too, just because I like to see if the flights are going to go up and down, you could put in whether you want like a non-stop or if you don't care for anything. I hate uh, multiple stops. I like non-stop. Uh, but you could do that. And also, of course, we all know Spirit is the cheapest. I fucking hate Spirit. I think I flew Spirit maybe two times out of my whole life. No, maybe three. And each time, it just it just really sucked. Like the last incident I had with Spirit, after I was sitting there, my flight was delayed for hours. I was like, oh no, never again. I fly Delta. Delta is my favorite. Um, but then again, people, some people don't care. You want a cheap flight? Hey, Spirit. Um, what perks does Spirit have? I think Spirit has some type of club where you can get where you get discounts and stuff. But they will text this shit out of you. So by the time. The last time I flew Spirit, it was because we all went in a group and I wanted to be on the same flight as everybody else. Everybody else wanted to fly Spirit. So I'm like, fuck, I don't want to fly by myself this time. So I'll just get on the Spirit. But what I did, the heck to Spirit is to pay for the um, big front seat. You're going to have to pay extra for the big front seat, which it kind of defeats the purpose because you end up paying as much as a Delta flight anyway. But if you're in a situation where your homegirls or your homeboys, like, you know, I don't want to pay that much to fly. Let's get on Spirit. Always opt for the big front seat. The big front seat is like Spirit's first class and there's plenty of room. It's a comfortable seat and you ride at the front and you get to board first. So if you do have to travel Spirit, I would recommend that. Um, but the kind, I don't like Spirit because when I travel, I pack like I'm going to be gone forever. So my bag is always close to 50, if not more than 50 pounds. And I think spirits limit is like $40. And if you go over that, I don't know how much, I think like 10, $20 more if you go over that $40. Um, then also with spirit, I don't think you can carry as many bags on a plane. But anywho, I will recommend Delta, especially now y'all. So they got all these payment plans. Um, if your credit ain't bullshit i don't think car Klarna even goes off credit i'm not sure but do delta and just do it on a little payment plan trust me best best to fly um so what else we got so we covered the the flights fun jet okay so another um flight saver is a site called fair grabber fair grabber so with Fair Grabber, you can bid on your flights. So you can pretty much put in like, okay, I want to play, pay X, my, X, Y, Z amount of money and put in a bid. And I think there's, I don't know how many, I think it's like 48 hours or so that people, they have to come back and outbid you or that's a good place to find cheap flights too. I'll put that in the link as well. Fair Grabber. And like I said, you bid on your flight and that's that. And it's a lot cheaper than buying on a regular um, airplane site. So um, also, okay, a farm. Oh, and Uplift. The credit thing for FunJet is called Uplift. So I think they run your credit. And you could do like a six months to a year payment plan for them too. Um also, another cheap way to travel are Airbnbs. I've been in a couple air, really, really, really nice air Airbnbs. But for me, I'm just I love to have like the room service and to be in the hotel. But Airbnb is a lot more convenient. The first time I went to Jamaica, I got a condo Airbnb. We paid. We went from Thursday to Monday, and 
we pay no more than $500 for the whole weekend in an Airbnb in a nice area. So what I would do is just research that area, the nice places to stay and get you an Airbnb if um, an expensive hotel is not feasible. Um, make sure when you do do the Airbnb to look at the reviews. Look at the reviews, look at the host reviews, look at the uh, place reviews. And like I said, I've never had an issue with staying in Airbnb. I think I've done an Airbnb twice. I did Airbnb in Jamaica and I did an Airbnb when I went to Dallas and they were pretty cool. So Airbnb is a good option if you're looking for cheap hotels. And triple A, if you have triple A, I would get, just pay the $50. I would get triple A just for the rewards to get discounts like, because I love to stay at the Marriott. I think the Hilton does too, but Marriott also does a triple A discount. So that's another cheap way um, for your hotels. And now when you go out of the country, all inclusives are the best thing ever. It includes your, your alcohol, includes your food. You can always, of course, go out the resort or whatnot, but it includes all of that stuff. So all inclusives are a good option. You don't have to have a whole lot of money with you, you know, just have your little emergency fund on the side or if you want to get super souvenirs. But if you go out of the country and do an all-inclusive, that's a good way to save some money too. Um, now let's talk about the airport part. So you have TSA PreCheck, you have Clear, and you have Global Entry. If I knew about Global Entry first, I would have did that. But right now I had a TSA PreCheck, which is good for five years. I have TSA PreCheck and Clear. So let me explain the difference. Global entry is where you can go uh, expedited through the airport and you don't have to wait in those long lines. You know how when you go through security and you see all that line, all of those lines, when you're going out of country, you don't have to wait. TSA pre-check, you don't have to wait in the security lines e either. It's a um, separate line that you go through and you don't have to take off your shoes. You don't have to take out off your belt. You can wear your light jacket. You don't have to take, cause I would carry like my iPad and stuff. And you know, you have to put those in a separate band from whatever carry on, whatever you got. You don't have to take any of that stuff out when you do TSA pre-check. You don't have to take off your shoes. You don't have to do any of that. It's quick process. So I also have clear which is the ultimate. If you have clear by itself, the only thing clear that by itself does is let you uh, cut the security line. You still got to take your shoes off. You still got to take your jacket off and all that. But if you do TSA pre-check clear and, uh, I'm sorry, TSA pre-check and clear together, you, with clear, you get to cut in front of the TSA pre-check line, which is already short. And also a benefit of that is, you know how sometimes they do like a random search. That has happened to me one time when I was coming back from Jamaica. They pulled my name to do a random search and they have to check all your bags and all that shit. When you have clear, you don't have to do that. Um, it, we, when you have TSA pre-check, you still have to go through that once every blue, blue moon. But clear, you don't. Um, so when I get to the airport, you know, you drop your bags off at the little luggage spot and then you go to the line at DTW. It's a separate line. It's like towards the end. It says TSA pre-check slash clear. So they either scan your fingerprints or they scan your iris when you go through. Um, it's easy to sign up for. I signed up for the clear at the airport when I was coming. Where was I coming from? Coming back from Miami, I believe. I just, it was a quick process to sign up. TSA pre-check. When I signed up, I had to make an appointment at a certain spot. Do not go to the one in Detroit because I made an appointment. The person didn't show up. They didn't answer the phone. Don't go to the one downtown Detroit. I ended up going to the one in Dearborn. And so they just asked you a few questions. You bring your passport or your ID or whatnot. They'll run you through the system. They'll take your fingerprints. And it took like maybe like a week to get my known travel not, traveler number. And a TSA pre-check is good for five years. Global entry, I'm not sure. That might be good for five years too. And the clear is a yearly thing. The clear, I believe it's one one something I don't know but I have the Delta Sky Miles so I got a discount so I only pay like a hundred and twenty dollars a year 
with that discount. And I believe they give student discounts too with the clear. So clear also does a free trial. So I would check out the clear free trial. I would definitely sign up for TSA pre-check because you could zoom right through the airport. You don't have to wait in those long security lines. And I believe how much I paid that was $80. So, um, if you have any more questions, list them here in the comments and I'll answer them for you. If you have any other questions, maybe I'll do a live to answer, but I went on eight trips last year. I love to travel. I got a trip coming up in a couple of weeks and it's just, I love it. You know, you just plan ahead. And I used to be that girl like, oh man, you know, I can't travel my friend, my homegirl, her and her husband took so many trips every year. And we were talking and I was like, man, I want to be able to travel like that one day. She was like, girl, it's simple. You can just, you know, plan ahead. And lo and behold, after that, I started traveling every other month, every few months and never looked back. So you can travel just like I said, you can say they have payment plans, just plan it out all you have to do is plan it out make a list of where you want to go and the sites that i gave you perfect perfect to use so like i said let me know in the comments if you have any other questions if you need me to touch on anything else but do not pay these instagram people money to for itinerary or oh wait left something out trip advisor if you want to know what to do in the area that you're going to go to tripadvisor.com type in there like i'm going to san francisco in a couple of weeks i'll type in there things to do in san francisco and a whole list of things will come up of what you can do like uh cruises or uh tours it'll all come up so don't pay nobody for no itinerary because it's really something that you can google it's something you can go on these websites and find out um other things shoot i watch the travel channel if you don't watch the travel channel travel channel will give you some ideas of what to do and where to go and that's that's pretty much it that's how i plan my trips i'll see something like oh i saw this on tv i want to do this so i just look it up i google it or i go on trip advisor and um plan my trip out y'all can do it if you need help inbox me message me i got you girl or guy whatever um like i said if you guys have any questions put it down below in the comment um make sure you click that subscribe button to get more videos from me like i said i'm going to cali in a couple weeks so you'll definitely get a vlog for that i love you guys thank you for watching okay i'm editing my video and realize i forgot to tell you guys when you do book these hotels um on a payment plan, just make sure you have your security deposit because you're still going to have to pay your security deposit um, when you get to the hotel. With FunJet, the resort fees and stuff are all included in your monthly payment. So I just wanted to add that in. Mm -hmm.